Urging strikes, but if you don't kind of choose that and choose urge a U-turn or a close combat, it sounds like something looking really interesting. And yeah, here it is. Urshifu and Chen Pao there for Kamine. A little bit of a switch up, but no switch ups at all from Bus. Bringing that back Scalibur that did so much work with the Terra Bug and the Landorus into the four turn one. So going into this turn, obviously, Urshifu plus Chen Pao is a really, really strong lead. Nothing can protect from Urshifu thanks to that Unseen Fist, and it's further boosted in its damage thanks to the, the Sword of Ruin that's in play as well. Both Pokemon also resisting Ice, which is probably very good. So Kalmine obviously seeing that Vaxcalibur is a problem, so let me resist everything that you've got. <laughs> yeah, and... This is where you've got to be really careful if you're Kamini because you really want to lock into that surging strikes, but you know that Ogapon came to the last game. And so do you really commit to that? Because yeah, as we're seeing here, Landorus switching out, playing on the defensive, Ogapon coming in with its water absorb ability. Will it be able to fend off a surging strikes from Kamine or will Kamine have seen right through it? So yeah, the Terror Bug to be able to take that close combat is definitely a nice option here. And to also be able to take the potential Sacred Sword from the Chen Pao, so it makes a lot of sense. But Kamine may see this coming here, but no, it is that Sunny oh, Strikes into that slot. Correct yes, slot. so into the correct one indeed. So that's definitely doing a lot more than it otherwise would. A great call oh, from Kamine. Is this an Icicle Crash with the follow-up? Will it be able to pick up the knockout onto Baxcalibur? It did so much work. The Icicle oh. Crash comes out, Baxcalibur avoiding the attack. It's not able to get there whatsoever. Glaive Rush instead able to connect into the Urshifu. Not enough for the KO but it is bringing it to Ice Shard range. Yes, a really good call from Kalamine there but unfortunately Batscalibur gets away with it again and gives so much damage putting that Urshifu oh. into Ice Shard range as you said there Ben. Wow, that was such a great call from Kalamine. It didn't come off but you have to respect that play. Seeing the Landorus, seeing how much of a threat it was in game one but also understanding Understanding that that Baxcalibur was even more threatening and Bass was really intending to go for his Terror Bug to try and defend it away from being a uh, to be dealt super effective damage by fighting type moves. But yeah, now you have a really safe follow me knowing that Urshifu is locked into that. <laughs> but if you can take it down, maybe with a, an ice cool crash in the following turn, it could be something that could pay off. But yeah, Kalmine just going for it, just hoping maybe the best Galifer doesn't Cheeky. go for it. Like, although Ogle doesn't go for <laughs> oh, it. Oh, a critical, a critical hit! critical hit maybe makes up for it here, but still not a KO. And the Glaive Rush is enough to KO that Urshifu. <laughs> yeah, trying to, Boss trying to capitalize on the switch in. I mean, that's exactly why Carmine did not, in fact, go for a switch there and instead just went for the surging strikes. No problem if you want to preserve the health of the Pokemon in the back and certainly where Raging Bolt is in the back, you don't want it to be taking a Glaive Rush. Yeah, absolutely not. Like, that's not a safe switch in whatsoever, but it is in here now and with that Thunderclap, it might be able to pick off this Baxcalibur now and no longer resist the Electric type thanks to the Terra Bug here. But the, of course, the Ogbon could still go for that yeah. Follow Me and redirect away Sucker Punches at all Thunderclaps, which enables this Baxcalibur to get off more attacks. But this is not the Assault Vest Raging Bolt that we often see. It does have Protect. So there's no kind of safe play for Bass at the moment, because one could Protect and then one could Attack, taking a really key KO. But Bass can do the same thing and Protect his own Pokémon too. So, like, with the Chen Pao very much in the driver's seat, having all the speed, it's up to Kalamine where they're going to target this turn. And where they're going to Terra, because it is the Terra option coming out from Kalamine in to the Raging Bolt and David, round nine of the Utrecht Special Event. You love to see the Raging Bolt with a big heart on top of its head. Follow me on the Ogre Pond, redirecting away any priority moves like that Thunderclap that you just mentioned there, but no priority moves yet coming. Icicle Crash into the Ogre Pond, enough for the KO. It is certainly enough, and the Baxcalibur should be the next one that's coming up with an Icicle Crash, but smartly, the Terror definitely keeps that Raging Bolt safe, and from a flinch it looks like too. Dragon Pulse into the Baxcalibur is definitely going to be enough here, so there's a double KO there for Carmine. A great, great play. Big old knockouts coming out from Carmine there. Really important ones as well since that Landorus is no longer able to terror in the back for Bass and the Chen Pao on the field is looking really, really threatening.
both the Chen Pao and the Raging Vault do have the opportunity to protect as well. So the Incineral that's coming in that looks like it's going to be able to protect its partner Pokemon this turn may actually have a little bit of an uphill struggle. If both of Carmine's Pokemon do protect themselves, the question is, is do you do you play confidently enough to go for the fake out and then substitute on the Landorus? Yeah, that's a really good position, like, to potentially be. And if you manage to pull that off, Carmine has the momentum, though. He has the lead. And he definitely doesn't want to throw it away here at the moment. So, like, Bus can kind of take that information and try and capitalize on that here and try and go for that substitute to keep things safe as Carmine most likely goes on the offensive here to not try and lose the lead he already has. Fake out into the Incinero and a sludge bomb into the Ooh. Raging Bolt. Not taking any chances here whatsoever. Kamine not playing on the defensive whatsoever this turn. Maybe trying to capitalize on that substitute, but instead Raging Bolt goes down and we're gonna see the reveal of the final Pokemon and it is that Landorus. I'm looking at at least one one hit knockout in that Icicle Crush into Landorus, but we know that that Incineroar can take an Earth Power. Yes, exactly. Like, it's that Assault Vest, and that really changes things a lot here. Now, Kalamine has a very safe target into the Incineroar with the, like, a double up even. And so the Landorus could respond with that on Bastard's end and maybe get a KO of its own into the Chien Pao with an Earth Power if it's enough. But of course, Bast can protect his Landorus if he thinks the Icicle Crash is going to go there too. So I think if you're Kalamine, you need to target into, you know what's safe, that Incineroar. Earth Power plus Sacred Sword, just take it down, get rid of it. Maybe if your Shen Pao then goes down to the Earth Power, then at least you've made like a trade at that point too. But because you'll lose so much though, if you target into the Landorus instead with your Shen Pao, and your Shen Pao goes down to a Flare Blitz. And it's like they also are thinking along the same wavelengths there. The Sacred Sword coming into the Incineroar. Earth Power enough to pick up the knockout there. Bast didn't have anything to do against that play. And Landorus following up with a Valiant Earth Power into that Chen Pao that had its Focus Sash broken earlier from the fake out, but now it's Landorus versus Landorus. This is an end game that may take a few turns and it really does come down to the damage rolls and the choices that these players make because Bass has got the substitute up and Carmine has not, but Bass has taken over half of his health in damage. Yeah, the question is, does the Sludge Bomb break a substitute? Because that's going to be really big here. Looks not, like it. It looks like it. It does look like it yeah. because, yeah, you're under 50% here, but turning on the damage rolls, not every attack does the same amount of damage every right. time you use it. And Carmine's Landra seems to be Whoa. the fastest of the two, which looks like it is going to be a very big deal in this point. So, yeah, Again, faster. Let's see, does it knock out the substitute, Ben? It does. It does, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we're going to be able to see Buzz replying with a sludge bomb of his own. But it turns out that having the sludge bomb do probably consistently around 25% or a little bit more. I think he did a little bit less that time coming into there. Uh, it does mean the substitute wasn't quite the optimal play, puts Bass on the back foot there. And it, again, Landorus on Carmine's side of the field. I think you called it perfectly there, going first every single time, launching those sludge bombs into Bass's Landorus and being able to pick up the KO. Game two goes to Carmine. We're going to a game three in round nine of the Utrecht special event. Oh, what a way to end this day. Like, game three now with this cool backscalibur team, honestly. Like, so good. Like, if we could see that again, that would be great. Now, honestly, Going, like, thinking back to the game two and that turn one, yeah. where Kalamine makes a, like an amazing read and obviously doesn't quite pay off as he hoped because the Icicle Crash missed. Does Bas let Kalamine get away with that in the same in the same way? That's the question. Mm. But either way, I think Chen Pao as a lead was really, really nice for Kalamine to be able to so pressure strong. so much because it outspeeds everything that Bas has bar the Reggie Lecky that he doesn't seem to be wanting to bring to this matchup. So if that still remains the same. I think it's still really nice because it threatens Bars to go for that terror really early, and that yeah. makes decisions so much easier for Kalamain. But the thing is, is that terror didn't actually do really anything in yeah. that game. The Icicle Crash and the Surging Strikes would have been doing the same damage regardless of if Bass went for the Terra or not. So you kind of have to go for the Terra thinking that your opponent's going to go for fighting type moves or uh, in Sacred Sword and Close Combat. Close Combat being the one that you lock into when you're worried about Ogapon switching in from the back. 
Uh, but I think Kamino really held their nerve in that situation, going for the surging strikes and the icicle crash. Knowing, I think, how well uh, Bars favoured bringing, having that Backscalibur on the field and using it to put on a lot of pressure meant that it was probably less likely to switch it out. And I think Kamino really took advantage of that. Yeah, I think you're right. Like, he kind of saw how Bass was kind of playing the game in, in both over that, that game one and the start of that game two. So, was able to capitalize on, like, how Backscaliper probably felt so safe in game one for Bass. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be able to take that. I'll be able to throw off there. You're going to be on the defensive, not not me. And then, obviously, ends up taking a double up that almost KO'd it. So, Bass definitely getting away with it, at least at that turn, but not quite enough to be able to get him the game. No, I think, like, the question is change-ups here, David. Do we see that Regilecki? Call it now. No. No. No for the Regilecki. <laughs> there we go. There's the call. Let's see if we're correct. Game three of this set in round nine. Let's get it started between these two players and see what adjustments they're going to be making. It's Urshifu and Chen Pao. No adjustments from game two. And Sylveon, the adjustment Whoa, here okay. with that Ogre Pond. What a switch up. Yeah, we haven't even talked about the Sylveon, to be honest, at all. Like, it is that hyper voice and quick attack. With that pixelate, it's going to be able to make those fairy type. And looking at that, that's looking so, very nice. So good. <laughs> so, so, so good. So, so good. And yeah, if it was in risk of a double up from a KO, it's supported by that Ogre Pond. So, Bass looks like he's absolutely called Carmine's lead here. So, follow me plus hyper voice looks really safe here. Urshifu has to either terror or go for maybe a U turn to switch out to be able to keep itself safe from that. So, it still, though, would mean that. Ogapon could potentially go down here to like a U-turn plus an Icicle Crash and then getting Urshifu out of the way for something that could take a fairy move a little bit better could be the play. Steel Terror is the move of choice here or the turn of choice here for Kamine wanting to make sure that Hyper Voice is doing a lot, a lot less damage. But a Terror from Bass as well in this turn and it's going to be the Ogre Pond. So a U-turn and Icicle Crash now that the Ogre Pond is a water type, definitely not the double up that's going to pick up a knockout here and Body Aspect not going to come into play just yet. But if that Raging Bolt is in the back, it's definitely going to appreciate it. Oh, it takes that close combat just about. And honestly, an Icicle Crash, if it is a follow-up, is probably going to be enough. And yes, it is, but it is into the Sylveon instead, doing, oh my goodness, so much damage still. But now the Ivy Cudgel is able to come out instead. And it's into the Urshifu as it goes for that Terra as well. A great call there. Urshifu. Oh my goodness, is that just a one-hit KO? Yes, the Sword of Ruin making such a big difference in this match. And that close combat defense drop as well, coming really in clutch. But you, I, I even heard the crowd there just now. The Sylveon going for the flinch and not being able to get a hyper voice up. That Chen Pao still has its focus sash intact. What a turn one to start things out here. Now, obviously, Bus has taken so much damage on this turn here, but still with all four Pokemon on the field here. And Kalamine taking one Pokemon down, but Chen Pao still looking very healthy with the Focus Sash intact and still threatening a KO now onto either slot. And the Landris could also target down into either slot here too. Yeah. So, like, Bus may be taking two KOs in response in this next turn. I'm wondering whether the Sylveon gets an opportunity here to go for a quick attack and at least break the Focus Sash on the Chen Pao, bring it down into range of another attack. Maybe Ogabon plays a little bit on the defensive. If Bas can uh, get himself into a position where that Ogapon is faster than the Landris, maybe he's got a slot to be able to do a little bit of damage. And there it is, the quick attack into the Chen Pao, breaking the Focus Sash. Yep, and the Sacred Sword as well. Also, a really nice way for Bas to kind of like, know he's on the defensive, but really make our melee pay for it with a bit of damage on that, onto that Chien Pao. The Sludge Bomb, though, does seem to be enough to take down this cute little Sylveon, unfortunately, but does give Bass the opportunity to bring in something of his own, and it is that Backscalibur, Ben. <laughs> Backscalibur, the daydreamer, oh. dreaming of all of the damage it's going to be doing with an Ice Shard into that Landris, <laughs> I think, most, most likely, as especially with a Sword of Ruin on the field, there's no way that that Landris is going to be able to take it, and we'll have to see what is the last Pokemon in the back for Camille. You know, that, that really does make a difference about how this plays out. At the moment, Backscalibur obviously isn't able to go for its terrestrialization. That's going to mean that the Sacred Sword from the Chen Pao will be doing super effective damage. But the Landorus, and if it's the Raging Bolt in the back for Kamine, are going to take super effective damage from anything that the Backscalibur really 
wants to be going into. And if you don't target down the uh, Ogre Pond, it has the opportunity to IV Cudgel. Yeah, and if it's the Rilla Boom as well, it also, it's also going to take Ice-type damage into that slot too. So yeah, Baxcalibur in a really solid position right now. And it's the Incineroar of Bars' own right now, switching in for that Gem Pal. But it's going to be that Protect. Let's see if there was even an target into the attack. Is Landra being left open here? It Ice is! Shot. And the Ice shot. just goes straight into one it! One hit, knockout onto that Landra. In games one and games two, it was playing so defensively, but Bars calling this perfectly. Landra going on the offensive. Ice shot. One hit knockout. It is the Raging Bolt in the back. And that back Scalibur with the Incineroar on the field getting the Intimidate onto the Chen Pao is looking so, so strong right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Bust played out of his mind at the moment. And the Raging Bolt, yeah, coming in. It's not going to be able to take anything from this back Scalibur. And thanks to the fake out from the Incineroar and the Intimidate as well, this Chen Pao is so on the defensive. Yeah, double protect is not going to be enough. And a protect onto the Raging Bolt. Where has targeted in this position is that Chen Pao going down well it's the Raging Bolt that's going to be taking the fake out if I was going to be saying it's going to be a Glaive Rush yes into this Chen Pao picking up a knockout Bas calling it absolutely perfectly that Chen Pao is down and out Ogre Pond, Backscalibur, Incineroar. This Raging Bolt has a lot of Pokemon left to be able to try and knock out here. Oh yeah, it's long necked, but it's not going to be a, enough of a neck to be able to deal with <laughs> what Bass has right now. Yeah, Dragon Balls even into that slot. Still, Bass calling it yet again from Kalamine here. And that Incineroar is now going to be able to do a nice, safe U-turn, pivot out, be able to come right back in again and support this Backscalibur in future turns. Crucially resetting the secondary effect of that Glaive Rush, making sure the Backscalibur is not taking double damage because it's the Draco Meteor, not the Draco Meteor, and instead the Dragon Pulse. It's likely that that Backscalibur would even be able to uh, survive that attack. But with the Ogre Pond now being able to be pivoted in, Bass has the follow me capability that Backscalibur is not even going to have to worry about taking an attack now, can just go straight on the offensive for the Glaive Rush. And Carmine knows that locks in the forfeit. Vaz van der Heijen is your winner of round nine, making it into day two.